welcome to another video. This is just going to be a quick one on the truck since the kids are asleep and we can't quite do the camper yet. But I wanted to talk you through what we bought, why we bought it. Um, this is definitely going to be a little bit more on the vehicle nerd side. So if you don't care about this, don't watch it. I'm not going to be offended. But for those of you who do care and want to know about pulling a trailer, so the requirements we have, this guy weighs dry about 7,200 pounds. Its gross weight is up to 10,500. So that kind of pushes it a little bit outside of the regular half ton F-150 or 1500 uh, truck range. So we were looking at, because initially I'd wanted to get like a Toyota Tundra or something, but that doesn't really cut the mustard here. So that took us to three quarter ton or one ton trucks. And I wanted to do this on a budget of about 20 grand. So in the interest of giving you kind of a, a why and a background of why we were looking at this kind of thing. So not knowing really anything, I've never owned a full size truck. I didn't know a lot about them. I did a lot of research on them and really, and I don't want to offend anybody if you have allegiances to truck brands, but two specific engines really popped out doing research on maximum reliability. And it's the Ford 7.3 diesel, uh, which is actually a, an international engine. It's not a Ford engine, which, so for those of you who don't like Ford, you can laugh at that, because uh, Ford's first attempt at diesel was pretty pathetic. And pretty much any Cummins, five, nine, six, seven, et cetera, um, any Cummins that's in a Dodge is also a great truck. But not to say that Duramax is bad or anything else, but just looking at strictly on the long-term reliability, how many miles on average do they run? 7.3 was the best, uh, followed by the Cummins as well. So we're looking for both of those somewhere in the $20,000 range, which puts you at Obviously the 7.3 ended in 2003, which is what this truck is. Um, the Cummins kind of up to 20 grand probably puts you pre 2008 or so. And that's kind of the range I was looking at, but I wanted something with low miles that was in good shape. Uh, not interested in getting into a lot of automotive related issues, hopefully. So this guy popped up. It's a 2003 7.3 power stroke. It has 173,000 miles on the body, but it only has 22,000 on the engine, which is pretty rare for these because usually they last longer than 150,000 miles. Uh, but the previous engine spun a bearing at 150,000 and the guy who owned it before me ran a lumber company and he got all his work done at a fleet service place um, and he didn't have time to wait for them to rebuild the current engine or anything. So it's got a Jasper engine in it, 22,000 miles old. Actually, everything under the hood essentially is 22,000 miles old. Engine and turbo system, turbo intercooler, piping, etc. Um, so, underneath, this guy's pretty new. The only slight concern is the transmission, which I'm sure will have to be replaced at some point. But when I bought it, it was completely stock. Uh, he had done absolutely nothing to it, which is rare to find. Uh, but to talk you through, I only did a couple of things to get this guy ready. So the biggest complaint against these engines specifically is they have very little power. They make about 250 horsepower, uh, 550 torque out of the factory, uh, which for something that weighs almost 7,000 pounds and is pulling a 10,000 pound trailer, that's not really a lot. So my first and really main order of business here was to try to get a little bit more out of the engine because there's definitely a lot more potential than they actually realized uh, back in the early 2000s. So what's done on here, and I'll bring you around up and it's all that exciting, but if you care, um, some very basic stuff, three things really. Uh, put in a K&M cold air intake here just helps with airflow. It's got a four inch turbo back exhaust that you can't really see in here. Uh, just an MBRP stainless steel four inch pipe basically from the turbo all the way out the back. Uh, I put in a high flow muffler on that. You can get them straight piped, but I figured that that was probably a little much for us. Um, if I wasn't gonna be towing on the highway, I totally would have done that because it's 
ridiculously loud, but I figured it was loud enough. Um, and the only other thing I did after those two was I installed a tuner that you can see there. So that's a pretty cheap tuner uh, on the whole. It's just a gauge tuner. It's a Bully Dog GT. Um, I did that because, well, it was slow and I wanted to make it less slow. So that guy's got four different power settings. Uh, you can run just stock tune. You can run a tow setting, which has got shift points and everything designed specifically for towing heavy loads. It's got a performance and an extreme performance setting uh, for when you're not towing and you just want your truck to drive more like a normal car instead of a very slow vehicle. Uh, but that guy, at its top tune takes it up to about 400 horsepower, 800 torque, which is more than enough. Um, and it definitely, definitely makes a huge difference. It made it a completely different vehicle. So on the whole, those three things were, I think probably around $2,000 total. Um, not a ton of money, but not pocket change either. The other important thing that it does is it gets better gas mileage. So out of the factory, these things are not that great. Uh, it is diesel, so it's not quite as bad as you would expect from a gas, but if you've owned a three quarter or one ton truck, you know they don't get good gas mileage. Uh, so this guy, when we bought it, got about 16 on the highway, about 10 and a half, 11 in the city. It now, I'm not really sure what it gets on the highway because we've never actually tested it without towing the trailer since we put this in there, but we got about 13 and a half, 14 in the city after uh, doing the upgrades. So a lot better, three MPG better or so. And that adds up. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. We bought a camper shell for it. That's just to store all of the junk that we need to bring, um, especially when you've got an older rig and an older trailer, you're gonna be doing some repairs definitely on the road so I brought a lot of tools I got toolboxes I got jacks I've got all kinds of stuff um, in boxes back here so that if anything goes wrong we can fairly easily address it I also have the very low cost if you run out of fuel solution here with a couple of five gallon diesel cans I thought about getting a tank but for now I decided it wasn't really worth it Plus, I didn't have a good way with the camper shell on of pumping the gas or diesel from the tank to the actual truck fuel tank. So we decided to forego that one for now. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, let me know. If you want to hear more about something, let me know that too. Thanks for watching. You done?